Welcome back to Maintainer's Garage. I'm Bags. Yes, I'm still broken for those of y'all keeping score. For those of y'all that don't know what I'm talking about, I had rotator surgery uh, back in uh, December of 2021. Uh, that is a zero out of five star re uh, review. Do not recommend. Do not tear your rotator cuff to the point where they have to rip it all off and reattach the whole freaking thing. It's a really slow recovery, but I digress. Why am I here? Somebody sent me a message about uh, road, their cross-drilled rotors in their C6 Corvette cracking. And I responded to them, but I thought, hey, I can make a video and I'm a little bored and I need to make a video because uh, I've tried to, I'm not driving so good like this, so I can't review my LX470. So I'm making a video on cracks in your cross-drilled rotors and what to look for. Um, all cross-drilled rotors eventually will crack. It's just a matter of when is it time to replace them but, you know, some are worse than others. And you just got to, it's one of those things, that it's kind of like, you know, checking your ball joints and things like that. You just got to do it on a kind of regular basis to keep up with. And if you track your car, do HPDEs. Or also, if you do like hard mountain runs, that's super hard on the brakes or canyon runs or what have you. Autocross as well, because that's more, uh, that's harder on the brakes than normal driving. And also, it depends on the kind of brake pads you have. If you have track pads, that's more abusive to the rotor than a you know ceramic pad. So all these things kind of factor in, but doing the inspection on your brake rotors is always a good thing. I'll move the camera in and we'll uh, point out some cracks because I've got some in this rotor that are a little concerning and I've been watching them for months now, but uh, you know, not driving hasn't made them any worse. So no issue there, but just, you know, it's something to be noticed of. I'll go ahead and say this and I'll say it again when we're up close. Don't forget, your rotors are cross-drilled on two sides. The side you can see clearly, the back side which you can't see, but you've got to look in. So though you got to look there too. You clearly can't look inside the rotor between the veins, but when you look on the back side of the surface and the front side of the surface, that's good enough. All right, let's move this up. All right, so we're zoomed in pretty good here, and you can sort of see uh, some of these, well, I hope you can. In my little viewfinder, it's coming out okay. I've got another camera as well that I can't see the viewfinder on. I've got it set up and it looks like you should be able to see it. So between one of these two cameras, you can, uh, you'll have a good view of this, I hope. All right. So what they talk about when you start looking at manufacturers, uh, I can only speak of GM and Porsche. Not that I own a Porsche, but I've looked at the Porsche spec. What they say is, on these holes here and man i need a sticker i need a pen now i've got a pointer that's super dangerous and hopefully the blades retracted all the way back so i don't lose a finger or donate some blood today anyway the first one of the first specs that both porsche and gm have is to ensure that this hole if it's got a crack it doesn't reach that edge now i'm going to turn this light on because Sometimes things get a little uh, better with light. Sometimes they get a little worse and I'm playing with that. So we'll uh, hopefully work that out. If you can see, that has a pretty significant crack. There, right there, yeah. But that's kind of long. There's one down here that you can't see in the camera, or maybe you can, that's longer than that. And that's pretty long. So that's kind of what you're looking for. And I wonder if I just zoomed in a little more, would that make this better? There's a lot of cracks there. There's a, there's a ton of small cracks right there. Those are insignificant. Um, perfect. So yeah, so that one's pretty significant. And this, those are just the things you've got to look out for. And the closer they get to the edge, or once they grow significantly in size, and that one's pretty big. Like I said, that one's big, and then there's another big one down there. And there's others in the rotors that you just have to pay attention to. And realistically, probably a good rule of thumb, if you really want to get technical, uh, the last I looked, Porsche spec is seven millimeters. I kind of keep the same rule of thumb. This rotor, I am okay with street driving, and by street, I mean normal street driving like a maniac, like I normally do. I would not do a mountain uh, trip in these. I would not do an HPD weekend in these. I've got a brand new set. I'll just slap on here at some point when I get ready to be able to drive again and that kind of thing. But it's just a matter of these cracks being a little concerning and 
the brakes are the most important thing in your car. Uh, so you don't want them to jack up. And I've even cracked a uh, blank rotor all the way in half one time. I'll, I'll, I think I still got a picture of that. If I do, I'll throw that up. But this is just the kind of stuff you want to look out for. I zoomed in on this one section, but there's uh, similar cracks over here. That one's kind of that one's kind of long there, but there's a lot of these little micro cracks that just aren't that important. I got a message and I gave I gave them a good explanation, but I didn't give them good pictures. So that's why I wanted to make a video about this to try to communicate and show that all cross drill. All cross-drilled rotors are going to crack. It's just a matter of how much, which cracks are more important than others. As stated before, you know, there's a bunch of little hairline cracks right in here that don't amount to anything, but that crack right there is pretty significant. That one's significant. Uh, this one it, down there is okay. That one's pretty significant. So. You just got to do an inspection, and, and I said it earlier, I'll say it again. Don't forget, there's a backside of this rotor. What makes that hard is there's a heat shield on the backside, so you got to do it weighed off wheels. That way you can rotate the wheel and look at the rotor at the same time. And this applies to your rear rotors as well. The front rotors take, the more beat, take more of a beating, so it happens more up front. You typically go, uh, you change your front rotors twice, then you change your rear rotors once, but not every vehicle is the same. All right, let's back out and end this. Okay, hopefully that helps you out with some uh, visual <laughs> representation. As stated, I like to follow the Porsche 7mm crack kind of theory, but both Porsche or Porsche as it likes to be called. And GM have the same rule if they're, you know, one hole's connected to another hole or if it hits the edge. It, the outside edge of the rotor is too much and it needs to be discarded and changed. All right, well, hopefully that helped out. Uh, thanks for watching Maintainer's Garage. Uh, hopefully this won't be much longer and I can go back to making videos at some sort of regular interval. Anyway, I appreciate you all. Thank you. Have a great day.